Tag, put your name in. I'm not into that stuff. No, that's not what we're uh, we're for. That's we're for destroying, um, you know, property and you know vandalism. Right? I'm not into that stuff. But if somebody's going to spend their time and design something nice, compliment that. Yeah, that makes something know, look good. I get you. they may they may have tagged your spot, but if it makes your spot look better than your spot did before, I don't think you have a, a, a anything to complain about. Because if anything, that tag is now going to get you business. <coughs> I think what would be cool if they donate like an abandoned building or something, and they have like graffiti wars. That I, graffiti that, wars. There is an that would be building. amazing if we had like a show or something like that. You're putting it out there, somebody's going. to... Somebody can steal it. Excuse me. I don't care. You can steal it. I got many ideas. <laughs> graffiti war. For all graffiti right. artists come together to compete to see who's the best graffiti artist. Yay. You never know. Alright. Uh, when you feel historically there has been so much controversy over the usage of marijuana. <clears throat> Whereas the damaging effects of alcohol are far worse, yet it's a billion dollar industry. Well, you know, I threw this one in there because you know I'm a marijuana lover and I'm a legal marijuana user in Canada. I have my card. I don't have a card. <laughs> I'll come up, I'll Canada. Come on. A card. <laughs> <coughs> oh, yeah. Um, face it, man. You know, everybody loves marijuana. Everybody. Like, I mean, everybody. But only the people that, that's passionate and, and, and use it, not for recreational purposes, but use it to meditate, to think, to relax, you know, talk about these things. I mean, you know, every now and then I'll take a toot, a hoot, or there, you know what I mean, when I'm creating my music. It just gives you that vibe, that relaxed mode, it just puts you in the zone. So, the government is making a lot of money on it, because now they, you know, just well, like the government's not situation. making any money off of my situation. My situation is different. I go to what is a dispensary. They do not get any prize. Whatever that place makes goes into that specific place. The government gets nothing. But if the government were to legalize it where you could just go to just your average everyday doctor and get a prescription for it and legalize it, it is well over worth a billion dollars because the reason why they don't want to legalize weed is hemp is illegal to grow in the United States for one reason and for one reason only. One man told a bunch of mean stories because he didn't want to replace his paper mill. He had yeah, I remember that story. He had a paper mill, and they were going to switch to hemp paper, and he put out all these fake stories about... And that's where Reefer Madness, that movie, comes from. Yeah, all those crazy stories come all into play in Reefer Madness. And it's kind of funny because a lot of people have just taken those stereotypes and just run with them for like the past 60, 70, 80 years, whatever fucking long it's been. But then nobody's willing to move on to the next argument because the fact is you can have 100,000 deaths with alcohol and 400,000 with smoking and vice versa. But if you're not doing enough to, to, to put education into this one thing that could possibly make things a better place is and there, there's churches that, that worship marijuana as their that's their sacrament uh, as like Rastafarians that's their sacrament well I mean it's not about control you know at the end of the day government that's, wants to control yeah. you want to control the marijuana you know it's man you know, At least if they own. controlled the marijuana, we wouldn't be in the financial straits that we're in right now. Well, you never know. Maybe we'll be in a different uh, financial strain, you know. No, yeah, that's true. They if probably might have fucked up somewhere or something. It's <laughs> crazy. All right. Uh, so, uh, other than your love for music, 
what's the other hidden talent you have? Um, I love my food. I gotta say, <laughs> I love my, I love my stomach. Man. And you know that's you gotta treat your body good. You gotta eat good food. You gotta be strong. You know what I mean? No woman don't want a weak man. You know, no woman <laughs> want a strong man that can cook for her and you know, take care of her. And that's that. I love my food. You know, I've been doing it now for 22, 23 yeah. years. I've been chefing for it. Now, now that's going to be the first question I was going to ask you is uh, when did you first start cooking and when did you realize you wanted to become a chef? <coughs> I started cooking, what was it, 1986. That's the year I was born, so that's 26 years, people. 26 years. That's a long time to be cooking meals. Since I was 10. Damn. I'm <laughs> um, Learning how to cook from back home. And that's what it was? <coughs> Jamaica. Home. I mean, when you when you grew up in a, a, as a youth, they would say in Jamaica. They call kids youth. You know, you grew up as a youth in Jamaica. You have to learn things at an early age. Learn responsibility, man. Like, it's not like here where the school bus picks you up and drops you off at school. No, Jamaica's different. You gotta walk 10 miles to school. You know what I mean? And when you get to school, your armpits sweat and everything. And so, you learn the hard way in Jamaica. And, and that's what I brought here in Canada. The hardness, the toughness, the, you know, resilience. Just keep going, moving, and, you know, doing what you love. <laughs> right? Ah, I love your food. So, you, you got me. But uh, I, I got a question here for you from uh, one of our fans. That is, is there any celebrity chef that you admire? If so, what is it that they do on their show that makes them someone to look up at? Uh, no, I, I can't say there's a chef out there or somebody that I look up at, no. Not even Gordon Ramsay? Not even Gordon Ramsay. Everybody's got their own style, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Gordon Ramsay could cook, you can do his thing, I can do my thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's, with Gordon Ramsay, you know, it's, it's the marketing and the promotion that really got him. That's a, on he, top. He's, got, he's got a really good team pushing him and, you know, marketing him. So the same thing that happens for him could happen for me. But it's where your heart is. My heart is in music right now because it's, that's, that's my number one passion. And food second, right? So where do you find your inspiration for your cuisine? Like tonight, tonight. Like tonight, what what did we eat tonight? We had rasta pasta. <laughs> we had uh, jerk chicken with um, some garlic, lima beans, roasted peppers, right, with a little bit of white wine, with some penne and jerk chicken. I call it rasta pasta. That's what we had today. Something different. And every Wednesday here at PHS, we have a thing called FFM, Food, Friends, and Music. Which is our networking and our social events that we hold here either once a week or twice a month. So whichever how our schedules work out, mm -hmm. that's how we've been doing it lately. But uh, it, it's something where we invite any local artists in Toronto to come out and network with other people in the industry because you may recognize somebody that you worked with 10 years ago and realize hey we, we were supposed to do a song and we never got around to doing it mm -hmm. like what happened <coughs> C plus in you and I, I went and got a haircut and the guy that was in front of me happened we, we we stroke up a conversation and it turns out he knows G Vine and I call up G Vine and ask him about this guy and they reconnect and they're best friends again. And I find this hilarious because they, they, they would have never 
ever gotten a chance to reconnect because he was ready to leave the city. He couldn't find a place where he could set up shop and do his thing that he wanted to do. <coughs> and, yeah. and now it's just, he's in here, as you were telling me today, he's in here like three times a week. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Like That's I like it. hearing things like that. It makes me feel good. Oh, yeah. Because it, it shows you that putting some positive energy out there brings a little bit of positivity back towards you because it, it had you two not met that, I, that who knows could, what, what's going to come with this this could be the next big step on that's, that's the thing about relationship and you know, building it with good solid people and having the uh, the instinct to know good solid people because sometimes people harbor uh, people around them but you really don't know what kind of people that is until something goes wrong Oh, yeah. So you gotta have good intuition, you know, good vibes. You know what I mean. You gotta know yourself, you know, to feel somebody else. I know if that person is good for you or, or bad for you. So um, I've always felt C plus is vibe. You know, we always vibe when we get together. So it's just a matter of time, and, and the time is now that we reconnect and we're making beautiful music. And look out for a C plus track coming up soon. And there you go, all oh, you yeah. C-plus fans, and uh, we are up to no, two viewers. <laughs> this is the first what up, episode, viewers, what up, what up, this what is up. our very first episode ever, so we thank you, two viewers, for joining us, and uh, let's move on to the next question here. Uh, what's your favorite dish, personally? Food? Yeah. My favorite dish and food. Hmm. That's a tough one, man. You can't narrow it down to anything specific? Um, is it going to be something? Oh, home? very simple. Uh, my number one dish, uh, it has to be a Jamaican dish, obviously. You know, <laughs> I'm Jamaican, so you know, I'm not going to say burger and fries or anything like that. Or McDonald's, hell no. Rasta mana eat McDonald's. <laughs> Anyways, my favorite food. <laughs> You know, I gotta say I love my traditional Jamaican uh, ake saltfish and dumpling with some banana and some planting. I'm not talking boiled planting. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know, it's a real cooked food, man. The real Jamaican cooked food. That's true. <clears throat> you know, when you eat that, you know you're good for at least eight hours. You know, you eat McDonald's, man, in two, three hours, you shit that out. <laughs> you know, that just uh, ain't good. So we eat the real yard food, like we would say in Jamaica, yard food. <coughs> that makes that holds you, man. That makes you strong. You know, gives you a lot of energy. <laughs> so my favorite food is some aki saltfish and dumpling and banana and boiled plantain. <laughs> and I say it in the Jamaican way. <laughs> I love when you do that. You love when we do that. <laughs> Oh yeah, man. Uh, what's uh, would you ever uh, consider opening up a multi uh, cuisine restaurant one day? Oh, for sure, man. You want to be a restaurant oh, man. one day? That's my dream. Yeah. I, I've had that dream for for years. You're gonna have restaurant <coughs> where you could dine and perform at the same time. I want to I want to merge where you could uh, eat and then record, eat and record. I mean, we just went to Stage West, me and Bella, and honestly, that was an awesome experience because that's you're, you're eating while they're performing a full-out play. I mean, people people have had that. You know, yeah. want to make it a little different. You have to, but the thing is that with that is, is it's a buffet, and then they close the buffet down right before the show starts. So you don't get no more food. You don't get no more food until I think it was intermission. And then they gave some, like, some shit. They gave a chance for some coffee or some cookies or some shit like that. And that was it. That was it. But nobody's combined the two where it's, like, literally art and food. Yes, yeah, music and food. All right, uh, we're running low on questions here. And uh, what is a simple meal yet filling the cook for someone like me that can't? I, I, I can't cook for the life of me. So what's well, something easy something filling? And, and filling that I can do with a lot of experience in the kitchen. You like pierogies? 
Oh, of course. Pierogies. Uh, a little Straight bit of olive oil. oil. <laughs> a little bit of well, you say something. I'm just big and from I can give you many things. <laughs> okay, let's run through top five list of I'll give you pierogies with, with some green onions and some garlic and some bacon. <laughs> right? I'm already and hungry. Eat that with, with some um, sour cream and some uh, mixed uh, mixed cheese. You could have. Um, you could have a nice California sandwich with uh, roasted chicken. What's the California sandwich? California sa- roasted chicken with tomato, avocado, and cheese and cheddar. That's, that sounds nice. good. And a nice um, baguette. Uh, you could have a nice roast turkey sandwich on a multigrain bread with lettuce, tomato, roast, roasted turkey. All right. You know I mean? Since we're getting into like the, 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 the so much different the food ingredients, do you find that there's a difference between organic and non-organic? Yeah, the taste. Yeah. And what do you think about them not being able? The, the, they tr- actually somebody tried to get them to start labeling <coughs> GMO products, um, and but the government not. denied the bill. The reason why they denied because these. Um, GMO crops. Are, yeah, they, are, they have certain things that they spray on it. Well, no, the, that's the thing is that they don't have to spray it on it. It's a, the the they they are what we're talking about. People here is the Roundup Ready seeds. They have Roundup Ready corn, and what it is is it's genetically modified to grow the pesticide inside the plant. Therefore, if the plant is eaten by the pest, the pest dies. That's so. So it's therefore. When you and I go and bite into that s- corn from the store, the Dole or whatever the, the, the brand names are, the ones that are Monsanto seed farms, are, are we're biting into pesticides and shit. Yeah, and that's not right. They, they, they should, I, I think that should be the number one thing, is they, you should be able to label your, if your products are genetically modified because it, Absolutely, because people want to know what they're eating. Yeah, and if people, people want, want it, what, non-hybrid foods. Yeah. That's what they want. Is people want people to stop. Like I, I always point back to the episode of The Simpsons when they crossbred the tomato and tobacco, and they got toba- uh, tomaco, and the whole town goes crazy eating these, <laughs> eating these tomatoes, and they start giving them to like little kids and shit, and the whole town is willing to kill over these red. Tomacco plant, or, or, and it looks like a tomato. Yeah, it's been genetically modified. Modified. So it's got all the nicotine in it that a pack of cigarettes would, but it, it tastes like a tomato. <laughs> <laughs> like, like the, some shit like that. That, that that's real now. Yeah, yeah. That's, no, no, that's happening for real in the world. Yeah. Like, you know, scientists are doing some crazy stuff, and you know. Well, what do you think about that video I posted on my Facebook the other day, where uh, they had the, I think it's the, the Pentagon. There was it was a project of the Pentagon where they are going to dispel the God gene, and that is when there's going to be a revolution, they are going to release this virus into the natural population. And what it does is it attacks the frontal lobe and pretty much turns you into a fucking zombie. And then the, the, this is from that. 2005. You heard about Jones? I, I lo- yeah, you but I went and looked, at, Jones? I looked up the video. I posted it on my Facebook. This mm-hmm. video is from 2005. So if this video is from 05, I can pull it up on YouTube right now and we can watch it for the, 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 the guests. Like, it's, the, yes, like, it's, the, it's some of the craziest nonsense that you could possibly think of because these people are really endangering our lives now. Now, you, now you, when you're willing to well, I mean, you're, you're already know what they want to do. They want to reduce the population to 1.5 oh. billion. Oh, they want it actually lower than that. There's, they want it down to at least 500 million to where it's controllable. Controllable. Mm-hmm. And they need it controllable. There's another podcast that's on your stream, uh, the Joe.
Joe Rogan experience. He always compares humans to that piece of mold on on bread. Yeah. That just that takes over and turns the whole piece of bread into mold. Mm -hmm. That's what human beings are. Because if you fly over a city to the earth, if you yeah, it, like if you fly into Toronto from like, and you see all the forest and shit of like northern Ontario, and you see all the green. And then you see Toronto, and it's just this growth. It's this cancer. That's what we are. We're this cancer to the earth. And that's what they believe is uh, this nonsense. Like, they can destroy certain people because of certain cases of, say, somebody develops a... Uh, a mutation. They're not going to want people to realize that's what it's called. It's good. Look it up at home. It's called Pentagon Briefing on Removing the God Gene. The God Gene. Uh, do you have the volume for this? Individuals who are religious fun fundamentalist religious fanatics and this is the expression uh, RT-PCR, real-time PCR uh, expression of the VMAT2 gene. Over here we have individuals so, so, so let, let me complete so over here we have uh, individuals who are not particularly uh, fundamentalist, not particularly religious and you can see there's a, a much reduced uh, expression of, of this particular gene, the, the VMAT2 uh, gene. Uh, another evidence that, that supports our, our hypothesis of, for the development of, of, of this um, approach. Uh, what you, what you see here is by, by, by spreading this virus, we're going to eliminate individuals from dying on a bomb fest and going into a market and blowing up the market. So our, our hypothesis is that these are fanatical people, uh, that they have overexpression of the VMAT2 gene and that by vaccinating them against this, will eliminate this behavior. Uh, so we have some, some very, very uh, remarkable data in this next slide. Uh, here we have two uh, brain scans. These are fMRIs. Uh, these are two different individuals with different levels of expression of VMAT2. Uh, on top uh, is an individual who's a religious fanatic, an individual, and we've repeated this numerous times, that, that uh, has uh, high levels of VMAT2. Now, um, this individual down here, who had low levels of the VMAT2 gene, this individual would uh, self-describe as, as, as not particularly religious. In, in each case, uh, these individuals were, were read a religious text. Uh, this individual, uh, like lit up um, the, the right middle frontal gyrus, uh, shown here. That just and, means uh, that part of the brain God. that's associated with theory of mind. It's uh, a part of the brain that, that because they uh, map the brain, what lights up when people desires. They they uh, in contrast, in our contrast, there's an individual who would uh, not particularly uh, self-describe. So what the, the, the it's saying is that this virus can turn this gene off. <laughs> what you see is that this part of the so brain called the anterior dense like lights up. This is a part of the brain that's associated with, with church disgust up. or displeasure. They can stop here. somebody mm -hmm. from doing that uh, by releasing this virus into the natural atmosphere. Mm -hmm. But if people smell it, what, how, do, how do you... So, so it, 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 it it not be like a the, the data that I'm like presenting here uh, <coughs> supports and then you uh, get the, the concept that we're proposing. And I think that we would not propose and he signed into you. Uh, so they just brief it. What did they brief it? FMRIs on, on yeah, this is some of that release the video. Afghanistan. So, yeah. The virus this would immunize the, against this, this VMAT. Having gone room and that would, basement, would have so the effect that you see here, which is, it's essentially a turn of part of the effects. A, a so so that somebody released and it. And we think that would be a major effect in the Middle East. On purpose. On purpose they released that. Just so that they can know. Just so they know that that, that that shit's for real. What do you think about something like that? That's crazy. That's to show you that uh, <coughs> the world is more corrupt. People are more corrupt. And
once again, control. You know, they want to be in control of us. Me, you, you know. And they're using our money to do that. Yeah, that's all funded by money. taxpayer money. Like, uh, so when you put the money in the bank and you think the bank is making money for you, your money's been used to do something destructive to the world. That's why this whole money thing is just beyond me. You know what I mean? I wish that we could live without money. Well, wh what do you think about this then? Uh, I'm not sure if you've ever seen or taken part in this, but this is Canada's federal debt. And the, 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 the big number you see is what Canada federally owns. That's everybody in the entire country, even the newborns. And the number on the bottom is what each of <coughs> us would have to pay in order to pay off our national debt. So, and that's like talking, you're talking about the newborn babies that were born today and the old people that died today. Take everybody in Canada and pay 16,000. going up? Yeah. You think this is bad? Is that accurate though? Yeah. That's accurate. Extremely accurate. And what's even crazier is the U.S. one. Because here, it's, and this one might take a while to load up because there's a lot of, okay, no, no, not on this internet. This is what their national debt is. Their national debt is fifteen trillion six hundred and twenty million seven hundred and sixteen million a hundred and some odd thousand. Fifteen trillion. Fifteen trillion is what they're in the red. All right, that's in the red. All right, but then you have total personal debt. That's personal debt. Me, you, her, him, her. What we all have combined together is at almost at 16 trillion plus the mortgage debt is at 13 trillion student loan debt is at 869 trillion credit card debt is at 791 trillion which equals 791 50, trillion yes which equals $51,000.68 per city or, or like personal debt it's crazy but then you have what? What's the, the, what's what the total of them? Well, they, they have these things that are called unfunded li liabilities. And let me find where those actually are. Where's the unfunded liabilities? Bottom. Where are they? Bottom. Bottom? Very last row. Okay, yeah, see? U.S. unfunded liabilities. That's a hundred and eighteen quadrillion three hundred and eight trillion. Oh no, I read that wrong. A hundred and eighteen billion three hundred and eight billion eighty four million and six uh, and growing. So it this so it looks is like hundred and eighteen trillion. Three hundred and eight billion. Yes. Now this is million. every single person in the United States would have to pay one million forty-four thousand one hundred and seven dollars to clear it up. To clear it up. That will never happen. Who's gonna fucking pay for this? Who? Who? who who's? Who's? So who's this money owed to? Them? This uh, this uh, this is money that's owed to Visa, owed to Mastercard, owed to your mortgage company, or so who gets this money though? Nobody. Owed to your mortgage company, or so who gets this money though? Nobody. This is an unfunded liability. What what somebody th it's all the frauds that get committed, like insurance yeah. fraud. That's an unfunded liability because yeah. nobody's going to pay Maybe. for that. Yeah. that. That's an unfunded liability. So that's how much of that is in the system. 
And then on top of that, you have what people are actually adding to it that are pay, trying to pay their shit off. I believe the only number that's going up is, or the only number going down is a corporate tax. And actually that goes up and down. I'm pretty sure it fluctuates. It's ridiculous. I just wanted to end the podcast off on that. <laughs> because I wanted to find out what you thought of some shit like that. That's some crazy. Hopefully in the next podcast that we have, we'll definitely touch base on um, the U.S. national debt and the Canadian national debt. Yes, we will look Talk into more about this. finance and <clears throat> what you should do with your money. Should you take your money from the bank? or? Uh, That's actually something that you should really look into doing and taking go. all your cash and whatever you have in bonds and start transferring it to gold and silver. Well, we're not sponsored by any like gold, silver companies or anything like that, but I've done it myself and in two years I've took $900 and turned it into $1,700. In gold. In gold. Because gold is going up, silver is going up, and I believe that uh, everything is going to go back to gold and silver when this whole big thing blows up. So if you have gold or silver, you'd be rich. And non-hybrid seeds. Matter of fact, did you hear about the big deal with uh, Iran and um, India? No. Oil for gold. I believe it. India is giving Iran gold. Iran is giving India oil. Oil Amen. for gold. Yeah, they so. got to pay for it somehow, right? <clears throat> India needs the oil because they're... Actually, they're booming, they're, they're growing. Do they're you, a phenomenal rate. Well, actually, we'll end it on this uh, funny note. Do you hear about the traffic jam in China? No. It lasted two fucking weeks. A traffic jam. You're kidding me. One spot, your car. Two weeks. Two weeks. You heard that? Yes. That was a true story. That's a true story. Can you find that in the next page? Yeah, they, they had actually developed a mini economy. People came out and were selling people clothes, food, saying, here, you can use my bathroom at this house and house for so much money. An entire fucking mini economy. You have a video on that? I don't have any video of it, personally, but it was brought up on another podcast. And when I heard that, like... You can't buy anyway. And they're trying to sell more cars today. Two weeks traffic jam. Two week traffic jam. Where in China? Uh, it was some Shanghai? Yeah, it was some major district. Where everybody was trying to come in at the same time and just just burp, two weeks. What'd you do? No, for I didn't those hear about weeks? that one. What would, you, what would you do for those two weeks? Those two weeks? Would you go through every song on your iPod? Oh. <laughs> 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 she said she'd shoot herself. <laughs> wow. Wow, two weeks. Two weeks. All right, everybody. This is us signing off for our signing first off. episode of Real Talk and T Dot. So uh, we'll get at you tomorrow with Oli, O L I, Demon Swag. Hit him up on YouTube. He needs those hits. And follow him at at Oli Music, follow G Vine at, at G Vine Music, and you can always follow me at, at Jordan Spla underscore Real Talk. That's at Jordan underscore Real Talk. Peace out, everybody. Peace out, everybody.